we talk about some transgenic bacteria first. E. coli, Escherichia coli, is a bacterium, is a short rod-shaped bacterium. This is most commonly used uh, microorganism in biotechnology because this is a bacterium who uh, do not cause most, most of its, its, its strains, uh, its types, do not cause diseases in human beings. So they are safe. If we produce a product with this bacterium, then the benefit is this, that product is safe because they are not pathogen, they do not produce anything uh, that harm the human beings. So we can safely easily use these organisms. There are a lot many other organisms like this. We call all of these organisms grass, the grass organisms, G-R-A-S, generally regarded as safe organisms. There is a list of such organisms present with different uh, institutions and publications um, which are safe, safe for human beings. They do not produce any disease, they are not pathogens, and we prefer to use these organisms, these microorganisms um, in biotechnology. We can use uh, the genetic engineering or we can use the uh, transgenic uh, bacteria in uh, production of different industrial chemicals because we know that bacteria, they carry out a process called fermentation and by fermentation, which is actually an anaerobic form of respiration, they produce acids and alcohols as the end product of this uh, fermentation metabolic pathway. So we can use bacteria for large scale production of such acids and alcohols. Ethanol is a very common product which is commonly used in um, our laboratories which is also used sometimes for uh, uh, cleaning up the wounds externally, the external surface of the body. When uh, doctors, they, uh, they inject, they had to inject something, a medicine or drug inside the body. They clean up the surface of the body uh, with ethanol. Transgenic bacteria are very commonly used in uh, pharmaceutical industry. We just talked about insulin, production of human insulin, production of human growth hormone, we also can use uh, the transgenic bacteria for production of vaccines. We know that vaccine um, is um, some agent which uh, produces immunity against some specific disease. We can use transgenic bacteria to make various vaccines in mass quantities. And of course, their cost is also reduced and their allergic reactions are also reduced if we use um, the genetic engineering technology. Transgenic bacteria are also used in the food industry and in treatment of waste materials. We traditionally use bacteria for making yogurt, cheese, sour creams, the breads in our baking, in making beverages and drinks. We make these things at home. People make bread at home, people make cakes at home. Um, and we know that in baking, we use yeast, which is a microorganism. But at large scale, at industrial scale, when we want to make these products as, at a very large scale, we actually have to um, modify and improve uh, the strain of our bacteria, the type of our bacterium to give um, a more better yield or a more better taste to our product. We can sometimes use transgenic bacteria, sometimes we use uh, natural, naturally present strains, the types of bacteria to make these products. Bacteria are uh, also used, the transgenic bacteria or some naturally found bacteria, which are wild type, uh, which are not uh, modified. We can also use them in treatment of waste materials. We know that as the population is increasing, industries are increasing, agriculture is, in is increasing, and we have a lot many types of waste, solid waste, liquid waste, the waste water, waste water of industries, waste water of agriculture, there are a lot many other things uh, which we simply throw away in the environment. We can use transgenic bacteria or some specific kinds of bacteria present in natural environments to treat these solid, liquid or any other type of waste and convert these wastes into some even useful products. We can convert the solid waste um, into methane, the gas, the biogas, uh, which we can use in um, in our cooking or in make, running our uh, generators to uh, produce electricity. So not only these transgenic bacteria can convert uh, our waste materials into uh, 
uh, non-toxic toxic products which are actually toxic for the environment and uh, uh, by bacterial action these could be converted into non-toxic products which are um, not toxic for the environment but we can produce useful products using those bacteria. We can call those products um, some, some sort of biofuels. There are many parts of the world um, in which they actually make their own gas and they make their own electricity by using their own solid waste. And this solid waste is actually reacted upon by uh, some uh, bacteria and those bacteria convert these wastes into methane, the gas, or also called the biogas. And with this gas, they, they uh, actually run their uh, gas generators and produces electricity. So bacteria are this much useful. Now we talk about transgenic plants. We know that plants, we grow, uh, are of course the very important part of ecosystem and they are producers. But we also use plants, um, we actually grow them uh, as crops for uh, getting food at mass scale. For example, um, wheat, we need wheat, we need rice, we eat them upon, this is, this is our staple food, we make all that chapatis, naans, etc. Uh, using the wheat. We make our breads and everything with the wheat. Just like that, cotton. Cotton is very, very important crop of Pakistan. And uh, there are a lot many other varieties. We, we grow fruits in wider areas, fruit farming. All of these crops could be modified with the help of uh, genetic engineering to produce some specific characteristics which can, um, which can help them in growing better and in increasing their resistant Resist resistance to the environmental changes and to the diseases. We know that when we are growing crops, many times when we hear that there is an attack of this particular pest or there is an attack of this particular pest which destroyed the crops of cotton or wheat or something else, we can make resistant varieties. We know that uh, even our uh, many of our lands have uh, a salinity in water logging, same or thor. Hamari uh, bhaasari same or thor hai, ye ke namkiyat aur paani ki tadaat ziyada hai. Un mein bhoat saare paude jo hain, jo ke humari fasle hain wo grow nahi kar sakte. Hum jaantte hain ke kuch bacteria mein aisi genes hoti hain, jo ke salinity ko resist karte hain. Salinity mein bhoat achche tarikhe se wo grow kar sakte hain. Hum kya karte hain ke un mein se us gene ko nikaal kar kuch plants mein daal dete hain. इन प्लांट्स को अब हम कहेंगे ट्रांसजेनिक प्लांट्स ये प्लांट्स सिलिनिटी वाली जो सेम थोर वाली जमीन है उसमें अच्छा ग्रो कर सकते हैं क्योंकि उनमें सिलिनिटी रेजिस्टेंस की जीन आ गई है जस्ट लाइक दैट वी कैन यूज मेनी पेस्टिसाइड रेजिस्टेंट प्लांट्स वी नो दैट वी हैव टू ऐड पेस्टिसाइड्स टू किल द पेस्ट बट पेस्टिसाइड्स आर ऑल्सो बैड फॉर द प्लांट्स वी कैन इंजर्ट पेस्टिसाइड रेजिस्टेंस जीन from uh, another organism, maybe a bacterium, maybe some uh, pest even, we can remove one gene of resistance from an organism and put it into the plants. So if we add the pesticide, the plant will be resistant to that pesticide and only the pests are killed and plants are not affected. So transgenic plants, they are used in many ways. We can use transgenic plants to increase their product, to increase their yield. Um, now people are working on adding different types of uh, other elements which are useful uh, for the health of the people in the uh, plant's genome. If we add those uh, things like for example uh, some specific component which is missing in that plant, if we add a gene of that component that will be added to the plant and through the plant they will go to the human beings because they eat it. Transgenic animals, we can also modify animals with the help of genetic engineering. We usually modify animals for uh, better yields because we know that uh, human being is uh, culturing animals for centuries for getting protein, eggs, milk. We can use genetic engineering to add sometimes the gene of resistance into an organism or sometimes uh, we can add a gene that can increase the yield of milk, yield of eggs or uh, the yield of some other uh, sometimes some component in the milk or in the meat and our organism is modified. 
maybe it can give us better yield or maybe sometimes they secrete some specific products in their uh, uh, milk mostly sometimes in the meat there are different types of uh, modified um, uh, animals which gives a milk which have a specific components a specific component uh, present in their um, which is secreted in their milk because they are genetically modified which is required for the children of a specific area um, there is a very important application of these transgenic animals we know that human beings um, have to face lot many a large number of diseases and we cannot do the detailed experiments on human beings because uh, this may threaten their life what we do we make animal models of those human diseases mostly we use mice and rats mice particularly in their characteristics we know it by the blessing of biology knowledge that mice um, have lot many characteristics which are matching to the human beings so mostly what happen we make um, um, transgenic mice which which is just like a human being which have a specific disease for example obese rats or obese mice are very common in uh, in the study of diabetes hypertension and obesity we know that obesity motapa uh, is a very common problem everywhere in the world we make obese mice which have a specific gene that actually causes obesity in human beings so those mice are now just behaving like obese animals eating too much gaining weight just like that we can make diabetic mice or diabetic rats diabetes uh, is a very common disorder these days and uh, it is increasing and it is increasing the health cost and it is decreasing the quality of life of those people who have diabetes now uh, we can make diabetic mice by transgenicity that is by genetic engineering and uh, we can study uh, effect of different types of medicines effect of different environmental factors uh, upon the diabetic mice and uh, we can apply those results to human beings for example if we are making a newer medicine for uh, treatment of diabetes we can test them better on diabetic mice of course we cannot test them directly on human beings this is not possible so um, there are lot many other um, uh, animals which are used as model of a disease zebra fish for example have a larger heart and we use that uh, zebra fish as a model for uh, heart diseases for cardiovascular diseases we can even modify it further to uh, to um, make it um, patient of a spam some specific disease and then we can use or we can check um it's a uh, it's a different pathways that is which are the things which are causing this disease and we can also um check different types of medicines um on that animal model so uh, animal models are very very important um in pharmaceutical industry and in all types of health studies health research genetically modified animals um can give us better yields they give us animal models of um, human diseases um and they can uh, produce lot many things for us some sometimes uh, antibodies some enzymes and other things could be produced um in an animal by modifying it uh, using genetic engineering but though this technology is very very useful extremely useful but there is very very important uh, consideration that is the safety and security yes we can use genetic engineering in modifying organisms but when we add a gene or when we delete a gene gene produces a product this product can um is can do something some uh, some specific reaction that we do not expect sometimes the product of the gene which is a protein of course um can modify the reactions or the pathways that we want but there are there may be some more pathways on which that gene that protein can affect and we don't know about these so this is very important to find out and to verify that the gene which we are inserting by genetic engineering 
if we are doing this process and modifying an organism, is it safe to use that microorganism, that that uh, that uh, transgenic plant or transgenic animal for uh, human use? We call this particular field biosafety and biosecurity. This is extremely important that when we modify an organism, we have to find out that whether it is safe for human beings and for the environment or not. Um, and there are different organizations in the world which actually find out these things and after verification, they allow these transgenic plants, animals or bacteria uh, to be used in industries or on um, large scales. The microorganisms, they carry out fermentation. We can use these fermentation pathways for making different products. Microorganisms anaerobically respire to produce acids and alcohol. They produce different types of acids and they produce alcohol, mostly ethanol. Ethanol, we know, is a very important biofuel these days because ethanol could be used um, as a fuel in different types of petrol engines. Ethanol is um, in use in um, different countries. Some organisms also, some microorganisms also produces biodiesel. Some organism, they can convert uh, different materials, particularly the waste materials, into gas, biogas. We can use the fermentation pathways to make bread, cheese, yogurt, sour creams, and in industries, these pathways are used at large scale. How biology helps here? Because biologists, uh, a kind of biologist called microbiologists, they study um, the microorganisms, their characteristics, their structure, their functions, their relationships with each other and with the environment. And when they find out all of these ways, they can help uh, the industrialists to improve the products or in increase the yield of their product that they are getting out of microorganism by a normal fermentation pathway, maybe with the help of bio uh, biotechnology, that is genetic engineering or some other uh, biological method. Um, and also, these organisms are used to study um, different types of uh, expression of the genes. We know that genes, gene expression is genes produces messenger RNA, messenger RNA produces protein, and we call it the center do central dogma of molecular biology. So when we need to study um, that how genes are expressing in a specific environment, these microorganisms are also used and they help us uh, in studying the phenomena of nature which we cannot study in um, animals, plants or human beings. So this was about biotechnology.